Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley, and in this Constraints tutorial, we're going to use connections and tearing. We'll create some particles and some constraints, which we'll use to make a dynamic simulation. We'll set up tearing and collisions, so those constraints will interact with our scene geometry. We'll talk through converting those constraints to trails, and we will create some dynamic scene geometry from them too. So let's get started. So let's see how we can use constraints to make a nice dynamic simulation, but also use those constraints to make an artistic scene as well. So let's just bring in the next particle system and I'll hide that icon. And we let's just do as if we were doing a logo reveal. So we'll go to MoGraph, let's bring in a Mo text. And that Mo text, let's just put, I'm going to put XP for X particles. And in the font, I'm going to go for raw line and we'll go middle and let's pick the bold okay so there's my text you know what let's put a nice cap on we'll put a fillet cap let's make it three and three is that all right let's have a look at the lines so this just makes a nice kind of bevel yep that'll do fillet cap three and three so there is our mo text that's going to do us fantastic do you know what? i'm going to make might make that a little bit fatter let's make it a bit more deep there we go okay so what i want to do is spawn particles on randomly over the surface of this mo text and then we're going to use constraints to kind of peel and tear those particles from the surface as if we were doing a, a reveal so what we need to do is go to the emitter and instead of it being the standard emitter we want to go to the object tab and the emitter shape let's change it from rectangle to object Let's drag in our Mo text and we want to emit from not the polygon center, we want to emit from the polygon area. So let's click on that. So we want to take away any particle speed. So let's go to the emission tab and we'll take off the speed. Let's spawn, I don't know, 2000 particles. We'll try that for now. And let's, uh, do you know what? Let's go into shot mode and so yeah because we were in rate and that's just going to fire 2000 per second and that's not what we want we just want to emit them on the first frame so they're there so instead we'll change the emission mode to shot and then we'll shoot out 2000 with a full lifespan okay let's go forward a frame and we've got our particles let's just make that mo text invisible so there are our particles on our surface of our mo text I'm going to go to the emitter to the display tab i'm going to check on display constraints we haven't made any yet but when we do make them we'll be able to see them and i'm going to change the editor display from dots to squares and there we go so there are our particles so what we want to do actually before i get onto the constraints if i make my mode text visible again you can see that these have been spawned directly on the surface what we want is them just to be slightly away from the surface of that text so to do that we can offset it let's go to the emitter to the object tab and we've got an offset origin so if i just put that to say one centimeter respawn now you can see that we can see them better because they're slightly off the surface of our text great so let's make our constraints now. I'm just going to make my mo text invisible. So let's go to, well, we need to bring in a constraints object. So we'll go to the dynamics folder of the system and we'll pick a constraints. And the constraints object, we're going to go to the connections because we want to connect these particles and we want to connect them at birth. So we'll choose birth connections and let's just click it on, which switches it on and leave everything as default and see what happens. There we go. So we've got our connected particles. Now already, by doing absolutely nothing, it's quite a stylistic look, isn't it? I mean, it's like this kind of like webbing netting, which is covering our Mo text object. So that's pretty interesting. Excellent. So now what we want to do is we want these to kind of dynamically peel away from this writing so how might we do that um well we're going to do it with a wind and we're going to blow them off so let's go to the modifiers 
and let's go to the motion modifiers and we'll pick a wind and the wind object just going to drag it over here so we get this little um, symbol this fan and an arrow of the direction of the wind so let's just rotate that by 90 degrees and let's have it blowing up a bit I'm just going to hit Alt D to hide the axis. So now if I hit play, they're all just being blown off at the same rate and it doesn't look very dynamic, does it? The constraints aren't doing anything, they're just all blowing off the same. So that's not what we want. So just to demonstrate how this will look, I'm going to do something with the wind and, and this isn't actually how we're going to get the, the final look, but to demonstrate what it, what's going to happen, I'm going to use a fall off in the wind modifier. So go to the fall off tab, and I'm going to bring in a, don't want a linear field, let's just change that to, what do I want? Let's just do a spherical field. So now what this spherical field is saying is um, if the um, particles are inside of it, the wind will affect them, and if not, they won't. So if I hit play, nothing happens, but let's take my spherical field. I'll just bring the axis back. If I bring this up, now the particles are being blown and we can see that they're attached to each other and they're kind of blowing away let's just put some more um, uh, frames on our timeline so now they're being blown around the place so it's kind of working not right but this is the look and it's peeling off like that okay so let's just reset that another thing that we're able to do here which is going to make this look better is if I just make my Motex visible again and hit play and put that wind on you see they're just kind of flying right through it and that's because there's no dynamics now we can't make the constraints interact with this text but we can make the particles bounce off it and not be allowed to just fly through it so to do that it's just a simple collider let's go to the mo text tags x particles tags and put on a collider tag so now when we hit it, those particles can't go through. And now you see they're struggling because they're, they're sliding up the text. But the constraints are kind of holding them. And now we've managed to break some. And now they're peeling off. And so it's a very kind of dynamic look. And that's looking quite nice. So what else we're going to play with are the break settings in the constraints object. And also we might mess around with the connection limit and the radius. So let's sort out this wind first, because I'm just using this field as a demonstration, but we're not actually going to use a field inside the wind modifier. So I'm just going to delete it and unclamp that so it'll just be reset back to what it was. OK, so now they're all being affected at the same time. But we can see that that collider tag has really helped us, hasn't it, with that look. I mean, even without any fall off or anything, that looks really nice. Got a dynamic blowing away of those particles. Great. So let's just be a little bit more savvy and, and give ourselves um, an option to be able to art direct how these particles are removed we're going to do that with particle groups so basically we're just going to have two particle groups one that is affected by the wind and one group that isn't affected by the wind so how do we do that well we'll go to the emitter we'll go to the groups tab and we're going to hit uh, create and add group we want two now what we want is we want um, the first group, the emitter, to put all of the particles immediately only into group one. So how do we do that? Well, in the mode, we change it from random to first group only. So I'm just going to change the color of group two to make it obvious. Let's make those pink. So hit play once. So all of the particles have been immediately put into particle group one, and they're all still green. So in the wind modifier, let's tell it to only affect particle group two so to do that we'll go to the groups affected tab and we'll drag in particle group two so the wind can only affect these particles and because we have no particles in group two nothing's happening so now we're going to dynamically and artistically move particles from one to two when we want them to be blown away and we're going to do that with a change group modifier so let's go to modifiers control modifiers and we're going to go to change group 
and there it is and the change group modifier it says what is the new group which new group do you want to put particles in so I'm going to drag in group 2 now because we don't have any fall off this is just happening infinitely infinitely if I hit play they've all immediately been put into particle group 2 see all the particles are now purple so let's just have we got those on yeah they're on squares so they're all purple um, but and they're all being blown away at the same time because the wind is affecting all purple particles so that looks no different to what we had set up at the beginning but now what we're going to do is use a fall off in the change group modifier to decide when particles get put into the group that is affected by the wind so what I'm going to do is go to the change group modifier fall off I'm going to bring in a spherical field there it is let's just make it a bit smaller so now if we hit play all of the particles are in particle group 1 and so not affected by the wind and as I move them into particle group 2 they start getting affected by that wind and they start dragging each other and we're getting this really nice organic blowing off of this mesh net so that's looking really really nice let's start it again and we can go from this side and they can all blow off and then move it backwards and that's a really nice look and I like how they sometimes get caught in parts of the text and it takes a while for them to break away and that's looking really dynamic really interesting uh, and it's really easy to set up it's the dynamics the XB constraints that are doing all of the magic for you so let's leave that so that's quite a nice frame to demonstrate them all flying off so that is giving us a nice simulation but then how do we kind of stylistically render what this has created well what we can do is we can create trails from these constraints so let's get that set up we'll go to the generators folder and let's bring in an X particles trail object and the trail object says which emitter do you want to trail so let's drag in our emitter and by default what this is going to do is it's going to create trails from the particles as they move so you see as the particles are moving it's tracing their path and creating this trail which isn't actually what we want it's quite a stylish look and I, this could definitely be utilized in a render I really like it but it's not quite what we want I just want to make a trail from these constraints so how do we do that well let's just first make those constraints invisible so we can't see them but they're still there so we'll uncheck display constraints so now they're invisible and in our trail object what we're going to do is we're going to set an algorithm a connections algorithm and we're going to change it from no connections to constraints still nothing happens why not well it's because we haven't told it which constraints that we want to make a trail out of um, so we used birth constraints didn't we birth connections let's take that and now we have an X particles trail which is being made from those constraints so these aren't constraints anymore we're looking at actual trails which can be rendered which is fantastic now this is running a little bit more slowly now because it's having to calculate the constraints and the physics and then it's having to generate the trails as well so it's having to do an awful lot more work but these are now renderable trails let's just quickly demonstrate that we'll go to create shader let's put an X particles material on the trail and um, let's just hit render and there you go so we're rendering those um, obviously you can tweak that to make it look nicer than that but these are renderable entities now which is really exciting so that's good we can go one step further though we have trails of course let's we can make geometry out of those trails let's go to the generator I'm just gonna make the trail invisible let's go to the generators and we're gonna choose something that can mesh trails which is the spline mesher so let's pick that and the spline mesher says which object do you want to make a mesh out of so I'm going to drag in my trail now this will take a bit of time to compute and then it's going to make some really big chunky geometry that's all intersecting and that's just because this um, radius is way too high the size so let's put it down to say 0.5 and 
it's kind of working but we're getting these weird triangulated parts and that's because we have joins selected and now joins isn't going to work when we're using the um, uh, constraints connection method in trails joins work for the branching system in X particles so we're just going to switch that off so now you can see what we've got is we have made a mesh polygons from those trails which looks fantastic let's just make them a bit thinner so these are now actual polygons which are being generated and those polygons obviously are behaving in a dynamic way and they're sliding off our geo and they'll break um, when they get to a particular constraint length and now they're snapping off and flying off all over the place so that's very cool we can actually get geometry from those constraints trails and we could even go one step further so this obviously constraints don't have any bend in them they're just straight lines connecting particles which is a nice look in its own right but if you wanted this to look a little bit more organic what we can do is we can then mesh the spline mesher so how might we do that well let's go to um, generators and we'll get an open VDB mesher let's just make the spline mesher invisible and the open VDB mesher wants an object to mesh a source so let's stick in our spline mesher as a source and we haven't got enough polygons to be able to mesh everything so let's reduce this voxel size and we're starting to get something so what what we could do instead of the, the spline mesher is a very small mesh let's make the spline mesher have a bigger radius which should give the open vdb mesher a little bit more to play with so there we go so now from that spline mesher we're getting a mesh which is much more organic looking using the open vdb mesher which is pretty successful let's just go to the first frame give it a bit of time to work out so that's pretty interesting that's our open vdb mesh which again will behave dynamically and will be flung off as those particles are taken away so let's just deactivate those and the trail for now and let's just move this along to get an interesting frame so we'll pull pick some of those off and they're all tearing away something like that then we'll reactivate all this stuff so you can see we're getting this quite interesting peel off of what looks like a much more organic mesh this could be kind of water being blown off it could be like a more sticky viscous glue that's blown off into the distance um, all looking really nice and artistic all based on those constraints so constraints really do offer you a load of incredibly versatile techniques in creating really nice dynamic simulations but also they give you lots of artistic rendering and uh, modeling opportunities to be able to get this out to render in very artistic and unusual ways mm -hmm.